I will be exploring the representation of societal dynamics using psychological fantasies and relationships through the analytical comparison of Darren Aronofsky's 2017 film Mother and Alfred Hitchcock's 1958 film Vertigo. Darren Aronofsky's Mother follows the relationship between the poet Him, performed by Javier Bardem, and Jennifer Lawrence as his wife Mother. The story unfolds through the perspective of Lawrence's character as Aronofsky utilizes the mystery behind Mother's psychological weakness and her anxiety during moments of escalating disorder to project a societal message on humanity's misuse of resources and the natural environment. As the story progresses and the outside pressure of the poet's obsessions affect Mother increasingly more, Aronofsky returns frantically to moments of chaos and fear as we repeatedly watch Jennifer Lawrence's character struggle to make it to her bathroom medicine cabinet and take sedative, returning momentary peace and balance to the household, the mind, and the audience's suspense. Similarly, Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo uses the psychological limitations of retired police detective John Ferguson, performed by James Stewart, through his various love interests and the pursuit of one final mystery case full of misinformation to reveal a darker truth about the macromized community of San Francisco represented throughout the film. As Johnny meets Kim Novak's characters Madeline Elster and Judy Barton in disguise, Hitchcock continuously builds the detective's flaw of vertigo by unraveling a murder plot through what he perceives to be suicidal tendencies and a secretive love interest. While neither filmmaker shies away from revealing and confronting the audience with either protagonist's obvious flaws right from the beginning, Aronofsky goes even further as to open the film with a scene of biblical connotation, where the poet Him revives the couple's isolation home in the wild meant to represent the Garden of Eden from literal ashes. Aronofsky reflects the overall balance and chaos across his film through the motifs of the state of disrepair of the couple's household, mother's psychological episodes and her mental peaks into a heart which we learn represents the health and strength of her extraordinary love for him, despite the many times he risks shattering this support. The overall stability of society which is represented by the house of him and mother appears straight from the opening of the film where Aronofsky portrays him placing his previous creation's crystallized love heart into its stand in the poet's study, slowly bringing the Victorian house back to life from the ashes, with Lawrence's character materializing in bed to wake up to a disappeared husband. While Aronofsky doesn't shy away from a very noticeable structure of sequence and repeatability in his chronological nature of storytelling, Hitchcock uses the flaws of John Ferguson and the limitations of his vertigo to set the character up for an undetectable crime which he will eventually crack because of the sentimental lapse in judgment of Madeline Elster's stand-in, Judy. Later, during the second act of Vertigo, as Johnny and Judy fall back in love, this time as their true selves, Hitchcock continuously builds the suspense around the climax of the final ending by integrating repeated moments of awkwardness where Judy hesitates and resists the detective's attempts to recreate the look of his forever lost love. As soon as the poet's prized crystal is dropped and shattered by man and woman shortly after him and man return from their walk, Aronofsky uses the chaos of mother's perspective and her powerlessness to spiral the film and story into a darker and more mysterious light. After the visiting couple leave the study, Mother witnesses him as he collects the shards and begins to crush them in his hands, leading into the bowl. This moment sparks a frenzy of anxiety and moments where the pair's house begins to reveal char and ash, leading Mother downstairs from the study past the living room where she watches as man and woman make love despite the horrible and consequential events they have just caused. This further triggers Mother's anxiety so she quickly searches for her calm in the medicine cabinet. Only then, after finally drinking the humming and glowing mixture of water and mystery powder does Aronofsky release Mother and the audience from this built-up tension. Similarly, as Johnny begins to follow and investigate the whereabouts of who he believes to be Madeline Elster, Hitchcock uses the mystery behind each next location to obscure the first climax moments of the story by revealing each detail about the mistress's movements just as Ferguson sees and understands. Hitchcock is able to build the tension around the purpose and true intentions behind Madeline's whereabouts as she is played by Judy, which parallels Aronofsky's ability to keep the audience on edge but not go over as chaos compounds more and more each time the poet allows 
allows strangers into their house. While Aronofsky develops an indiscernible disconnection between Mother and the other characters who interact with her and the household, Hitchcock maintains an initial unfamiliarity and lack of connection between John and Madeline before completely reversing this and showing the two characters begin to fall for each other, which parallels the exact plans of Gavin Elster. Again, while neither filmmaker shies away from using the protagonist's flaws to advance the plot in either a mysterious and unfamiliar or dark and chaotic manner, Hitchcock balances the extremely complex task of Johnny with a love interest between him and the characters of Kim Novak, which over the progression of the film sends a message about how both trust and mutuality can affect the inputs of one's reality. In a similar aspect, Aronofsky toys a message of human flaws through the seemingly chaotic and difficult process through which mother and him conceive a child, which re-sparks the imagination and inspirations of the poet, who writes another piece which inadvertently spirals the story out of control. The strain and tension felt between mother and him after this new work's publication is Aronofsky's way of emotionally removing mother's and therefore the audience's awareness of her situation as everything proceeds to chaos. Aronofsky builds this tension, leaving less and less breaks in between mother's attacks of anxiety and calmness before entering a final frenzy of unrest within the household. This tension comes to show different societal struggles as mother travels through her house, seeing greed, riots, hunger, death and pain, and Aronofsky brings the audience through this all, creating an almost battle-like feel as soldiers break through walls shooting. The poet's publisher is seen executing strangers in bags, and mother is confronted and saved by a soldier who is then brutally murdered in front of him. Eventually, this chaos settles for a brief moment as Mother crawls in agony towards an illuminated opening in the walls of the house. Aronofsky quickly turns his piece back into his feeling of constant tension as him grabs the mother wearing a gas mask and drags her back into the chaos of the house through what appears to be barracks of injured soldiers, then through crowds of strangers who are avid followers of the poet, grabbing and pushing at them as they seek refuge in the one safe place remaining, him's study, which he boarded up in a fit of rage after the crystal had shattered. Just the same, Hitchcock's first act uses an ever-increasing pace to build more and more tension as Madeline begins to exhibit suicidal tendencies while Judy and Johnny fall deeply in love. Hitchcock takes us on a visual journey through landscapes and scenery as the pair travel from place to place across San Francisco and California, his rising action holding the audience to the tension of when Madeline might die. From increases of close intimacy and the forming of a bond between Madeline and the detective ultimately serve as Hitchcock's first reveal as a mistress, escapes Johnny's safety, and darts up a monastery bell tower. This moment is Hitchcock's first act climax. As Johnny follows just behind Madeline, she climbs the tower, but suddenly, that one quality that the detective couldn't avoid, vertigo, kicks in and he's unable to continue up the tower before she ends up on the roof of the monastery below. Hitchcock's cleverness here is in how by this point we haven't seen Johnny's vertigo since near the very beginning of this adventure, and this allows for a complete second act with full gradual revealing of the truth of the suicide Ferguson testifies for, believing that was what truly happened. Aronofsky begins to conclude the chaos as he balances a precarious calmness with further tension bringing the narrative towards an end. We watch his mother's child is born before Aaron Aronofsky presents his ultimate emotional climax, where the poet stubbornly refuses to accept that mother does not want him to hold the child. The poet is unable to place the importance of mother's wishes above Make his own desire to interact go. with their newborn son, so Aronofsky yes, begins a final frenzy as the couple eventually exit the study, but their child is mutilated by the crowds of followers. After the child is gone and the masses begin to show grief and regret, Aronofsky presents the moment where mother is pushed beyond her breaking point. She punctures the petrol tank in the basement before lighting the puddle of the blaze. Ultimately, Aronofsky returns in an almost repetitive manner to the moments of the film's opening, in which the poet's partner sacrifices her heart, which crystallizes into the gemstone, able to revive the scorched house back from ashes. This final arc reflects Aronofsky's attitude towards humanity's selfishness at the most fundamental scale. After the house is revived from the ashes once again, we see a new partner wake up where mother did. Likewise, as Johnny begins to piece together the reality of Madeline 
and Elster's murder plot, Hitchcock involves a similar sense of repetition and deja vu to heighten the story to the climax. This time around, however, Hitchcock flips the sense of unfamiliarity which built tension in the first act for a turbulent decline in Judy and Johnny's dynamic. Although his message is much less radical than Aronofsky's chaotic representation of mankind's flaws and recursive greed, Hitchcock's repetitive portrayal of the disassociation connection between his protagonist and other characters serves as a warning of self-indulgence and its influence on the bond between all humans.